hello and today I'm really fortunate to be talking to my mate Jen Hopkins. Hello. Hello. Good to see you again. Um, now you'll probably recognise Jen because Jen is a co-host on the Sean Atwood podcast which is an enormous podcast and if you haven't seen it you'll be one of the very few people who haven't seen it. Um, so I'm just going to start with that Jen. How on earth did you become a co-host on one of the largest podcast platforms? <laughs> so it, I've been doing it now a year and a half. It started last September. Right. And Sean I'd known about a year prior to starting. And we we were really, we are really good friends. Um, <laughs> we were. I hate him now after working with, with him. him. <laughs> no. Uh, so we were really good friends and I came out of a really quite a tough relationship about a couple of months prior, right. having to move house up sticks, and he invited me out for some food, went out, and suggested that I'd be his co-host. And I was like, I, I don't even know. I've never worked in media, uh, as I was saying to you earlier. Yeah. The only thing I was good at was drama in school, and yeah, we just I thought about it. I went away. Um, and my first interview was Tug of War that I went in on. I don't know if you know. The no, music, tell me. The Jamaican music artist. Yeah, it's just the sound of it, the sound of it alone, yeah. <laughs> He's so, got some interesting tracks, check it out on YouTube. Right. And uh, yeah, he was my first interview and going in, I was really, really bricking it. It was... Well, it's a different, it's it's a different something world, completely isn't it? completely different, because at the yeah. time, I owned an organic cotton clothing company. <sighs> and so, <laughs> it just, you know, goes hand in hand. Yeah. Uh, true crime, organic cotton. So, no, I was working behind a com computer screen, uh, so it isn't face-to-face -face interaction. So it's a very different thing, because you've got to get your personality across. Yeah. And uh, did, did you have to read up about him? I looked at some of his stuff, like I right. said, I knew him for about a year before and I was looking at his bits online now and again and he's, I mean, he's an amazing speaker, isn't he? Yeah. And someone, I see, I keep saying the word and, that's why I don't like it. He and can speak for a long <laughs> time, can't he? About absolutely yeah. nothing. <laughs> and, <laughs> but, but keep going. <laughs> yeah. He, I mean, he did a piece yesterday uh, about Andrew Tate. Right. And he spoke for 49 minutes. I mean, who... Who can speak without a break for, for, on a subject? On one subject. And is that any subject? Can he do that with any subject? Of course. Well, t to my knowledge, I don't know. They'll, they'll be saying, I, I reckon celebrity goss or something like that. So, <laughs> so then did you feel pressure to have to, I don't know, somehow meet Sean in the middle and be able to cope with talking for long periods of time to, to different personalities? I mean, he threw me in the deep end. Like, with the tug of war, he didn't prepare me. Right. And it was almost like a test. So we're there, we, we were in the studio in Guildford, and I knew I'd watched his part one podcast with just him and Sean. Mm -hmm. And so I got an idea of who he was. And I remember, oh my God, it's quite embarrassing actually. In the, the first podcast, after everything Tug of War was saying, I was going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, the audience picked up on that. But you don't Very know. Very quickly. You don't yeah. know until you watch it back. It again, you yeah. watch it back and you go, is that me? Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. You do it. And because it's an automatic, Response when you're chatting with a friend. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> right now I've pointed it out. It's going to curse you. Right. It's the biggest curse. You will take that out, won't you, Liam? No. no. Yeah. No. <laughs> rude. Rude. So, yeah. so when you watched yourself back, what did you think? Apart from the word yeah, you are very self-critical of the way you look. Yeah. Um, now I don't give a hell. Like no, I'll go on camera, barely any makeup. I mean I'm might look all right today, it's plastered it on. But sometimes I'll go on like barely anything, my hair a mess, and I'm like, I don't care now. Right. Because I'm <clears> there <throat> as a personality, they're not there for, for what you look like. Yeah. But when you first see it, you are so critical of your looks, the way you're speaking, etiquette. Um, I'm a bugger for swear, like swear words, so but, I'll try not to today. Uh, but, it's all right. No. It's a, a very masculine show and you've got some real heavyweights, some real heavyweight criminals 
you know, used to be criminals. I don't know if they're still criminals. I'm not going to say that. But to be thrown into that world, you're very feminine, you're very pretty. Um, how how are you perceived by the audience that's going to be used to that element? They're used to Sean, and then you come in because. What I found is people get terribly covetous. They um, they feel that Sean is theirs or the show is theirs, or and then you pop in. So how are you treated? I mean, Sean did have his co-host Wildman, um, who unfortunately passed away yes. about six months to eight months before I started. R.O.P. Wildman. And so again, we've got the masculine energy, haven't so, we? And they, the audience loved Wildman. Yeah. Rightly so. He was mm -hmm. hilarious. Um, but coming on as a female I don't think they like me very much yeah and I got yeah criticized a lot uh, again on my looks and my question what does she bring to the table right. uh, what's the point of her um, I got called out every sexual name under the sun were you reading all of the points or d or did you try and protect yourself at first I'd read the comments religiously and right. I would get incredibly upset mm. um, I would take everything personal and well, of course you would. You you, you yeah. seeing yourself online. You're putting yourself out to the world, and if you, you're getting in, all you're getting is negative response. Mm. So you're going to take that. You're not home. thinking it's Bert in his back bedroom with yeah. his ba beans or his down his chest. <laughs> yeah, his granny's <clears throat> um, basement. Yeah, you know? and he's frustrated with life, so he <laughs> gets to take it out on you. Yeah. So so how did you um, did Sean help you get over that, or how how did you cope with that? I remember one of the worst trollings. Uh, was really really personal on myself and we were away uh, doing podcasting in Liverpool right. at the time staying uh, his family members and we were driving back uh, we finished the day podcasting driving back I was looking through the comments on YouTube a video just gone up seeing something <laughs> really bad right. uh, calling me <clears throat> a, I don't know whether I should say it on here um, but yeah calling me a very very bad bad name along the lines of snag or slut mm -hmm. and it went really personal into me and I got in and I was staying in a, a sort of outhouse and I just went in and I was just in absolute tears and I didn't want him to see it because I didn't want him to think that I was so badly affected that he'd Can have to pull you, know, you out pull me out because I might <clears throat> you know lose lose my mind or something but uh, he actually for some reason came in the room and sat with me and seen obviously that I was upset and talked me through it and said look th this is what they do half the people who comment negative are trolls and explained it to me mm. you know why would you put a bad comment on someone's video like who takes time out of their day yeah. to do that I, I don't get it I don't get trolls and I don't get I, I know some people go well they're not trolls they're just having an opinion okay brilliant they have got an opinion why not keep it to yourself and it's funny, isn't it? Because people, it's a cowardly thing because they think um, I'm in the safety of my own room. I can write what I like hmm. and there's no comeback. So I can say anything I want about Jen, but she can't come back and say anything. So I get my frustrations out. Because I used to get a bit cheeky yeah. and I try and be a bit funny, use my humour with right. some of them. But yeah, it just spurs them on. So now I don't read the comments. So and comment all you want, I won't be reading them. So have you ever been... Um, physically threatened yes and is that by somebody who's watched the show or is that by somebody that you you've interviewed god uh, I've had people I've interviewed I've had uh, trolls on social media like Instagram right send them threatening stuff calling me a bitch and all sorts do you get an instinct when you're uh, dealing with somebody that you're interviewing do you ever feel like mm, bad egg yeah Mm -hmm. I can feel their energy. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very much an empath, pick up on yeah. people's energy. And, and how how do you get through that? Remember that it's only two hours of your life. Right. <laughs> but it does come back to haunt you. I've had a, uh. a podcast guest in particular who sent threatening voice notes to me on Instagram. And they're uh, absolutely... I mean, now you've heard them, haven't you? They are absolutely disgusting. Really? Yeah. And that's somebody that you interviewed? Interviewed. And he's like... You better tell Sean to effing take my podcast. And we already had it. it had 
bugger all views anyway, mate. <laughs> but but you you're the one they don't they don't go they come to for me because they come, you're the yes, yes. yeah. What, why go for the woman? Mm. I don't get it in mm. any of it. Um, you know, Sean's a, thinks he's Karate Kid. Like <laughs> contact is him. He? he thinks he is in but... his own head. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like a lot, a lot of men. Um, so so. In that world now, are you more comfortable? Are you finding you found your place? Do you feel you found your place? I feel I've got a lot more thick skin. Right, you have to. Yeah. You really and, have to. You know, I know who my family and my friends are. I've yeah. got great people around me, a really supportive family. My mum watches all of my podcasts. Does she? What does She'll your be watching say? this. Hi, Sarah. Hi, Hi Mum. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> so, Look, what does your mum think? She absolutely loves it. Yeah. Oh my God! She'll sh tell all her friends. She absolutely. Oh. She's my biggest fan. So. Oh, how lovely! Yeah, and when uh, we went to a war ceremony uh, a couple of months ago. Can can we? Yeah, you show that. Yes. Podcaster of the year, Mad. Thanks. I'm going to do that. <laughs> it's not mine. Ooh. No, it's not mine. You hold so, it. So tell us what this is about. Um, this was the Glamour Razzie Awards. It's my friend's, uh, Mistress Cat's Bees, uh, award ceremony up in Birmingham. Right. Well, it's her and se uh, several other organisers. And, yeah, she put on a show for... It, it had different categories. Um, best webcam girl, <laughs> best right. webcam boy, best female <clears throat> model, best newcomer for the adult industry. Right. Um, she did do a podcast award, and so I won it alongside Sean. It was Can an we... interesting night. I'm going to tell you that. <laughs> oh, Sean Atwood and Jen. Wynn. Yeah, they don't. They don't put my surname yes, on there. Exactly. I was just <laughs> thinking that actually, best podcast. Well, seriously, well done. Thank well you. Done. How did that feel when they called your name out? Oh, it was brilliant. I I proper took took the stand like that. Did you? Yeah. Uh, Sean who? Thanks yeah. ever so Bye, much. Sean Moo. Yeah. yeah <laughs> so do you feel like you're really making headway now? So I interviewed Robbie Williams recently and oh. yeah, alongside Sean and uh, Andrew Gold at the time. Right, yeah, yeah. And Oh, fantastic. Like he was my idol growing up and I was like, I'm speaking with Robbie Williams and he started asking about my life and I was like, Robbie Williams knows who I am. I, I, <laughs> I found that I did with Robbie too, didn't I? Mm -hmm. Oh, I couldn't get him to shut up. He went on and on. Anyway, back to you. So you, that... You've interviewed Robbie? No. <laughs> In, oh. my head. <laughs> In my head. In my head. I actually thought you were being serious. No, like, but you might be my path it? in. I might you be. May be. It, Robbie, give her a shout. I love the interview that you did with Kerry Katona. Yes. And if you haven't watched that yet, it's a really good interview uh, where Jen and Sean interview Kerry Katona. Do you she see how I did great. that? I put Jen before Sean now. <laughs> so tell me, uh, whose idea was that? And how did you get in contact? Was that easy to negotiate? It, it really was. They can get precious, can't they? She was absolutely amazing. Shout out to Kerry. She is right. a beautiful, beautiful human. She came across oh. as, as, as like you'd want to go and have a cup of tea with her. Yeah. 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 I mean, your obviously partner yeah. was there. And you went. Yeah, you know, we did all the editing. So, mm. yeah, shout out. Yeah, so you <laughs> went, Jen interviewed, and I didn't go anywhere. Yes, that's right. You should have got the invite. I should have, but nothing must have got lost. <laughs> so, did you? Were you nervous for that, or did you feel like actually, I'm big fans, so there's a load I want to ask her. Well, get go. Well, go back to what you're saying about how did I? Who organised it? It was yeah. me who organised it. Yeah, got in touch with her agent. We organised it, and we went over to her house and did mm. the film. It was it's a. BC. It was I loved simple. it. Yeah. I loved it. It was and and I mean, how many people watched it in the end? Oh, it's got to be coming up to a. Well, the thing is, I don't know on other platforms because obviously we're on Spotify, iTunes, yeah. Um, and TikTok's doing really well. How many views the TikToks of that have got? But I think it's coming up to a hundred thousand on YouTube alone. God. So yeah. And but, it was really well received, wasn't it? Hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, it was fantastic. Yeah. And so I loved her house. Just the bit I saw. Oh my god! The it artwork, was, yeah, really artsy, really colourful, yeah. eccentric. The sofa we were sat on, the bright yellow sofa, she actually designed. Really? Yeah. So yeah. she's got many, many talents. 
I just found her really engaging, really warm. And I thought, oh, I'd, I'd go around your house for a cup of tea. <laughs> I think we'd get on like a house on fire. You would. She's just yeah. an absolute force of nature when she walks into the room. Yeah. Her presence is known. And so is it like her energy's expanded way out before she actually comes in? Is it one of those sort of yeah. personalities? Yeah. Also, a kids popped in, didn't they, and said hello before before she did. did. They? Yeah, and they were they so polite. Cool. How was Sean? Now, this is interesting, because <laughs> you've had to step into his world, and now he's, in a sense, stepping more into your world. Right. How did he... How, okay. I don't, he'd obviously read up on her. He was obviously a big fan. He followed her fashion tips. He knew oh, all about... Uh, yeah? Yeah, he knew all about her life. He you just know, couldn't yeah. stop chatting. You know, um, his favourite song was Whole Again. Yeah. <laughs> no, he no. knew all the moves. <laughs> yeah. So how was it for him? Oh, my God. He did that on an absolute wing but he knew it was my gig so yeah. I think that's why he wanted to sort of let me showcase what I knew about her right. um he had not a clue I said do you not like what where have you been he goes I was in America I said yeah till 2008 yeah she's been, oh, around. She's been around a lot you know but president a lot longer than that but because he's so engulfed because my nickname for him is the robot because he doesn't stop working right. so he's so engulfed in his own one track focus of YouTube yeah that he doesn't acknowledge the celebrity gossip out there. So. It didn't come across, though. I have to say, it didn't come across. <laughs> He's good at uh, hiding it. He, he, I remember watching it back and he was like, oh, talking about witness and all that. Yeah. And I was like, that's because the only similarities between the two of you is where you're brought up. Yeah. It's, it's so <laughs> bizarre because you've got Kerry Katona, then you've got the darkness of the some of the guests, you mm. know. Um, do you believe... Um, when you're around some of these guests, and then we'll move on to a different topic. But I'm just wondering, do you believe in dark entities? Yes. Or do you ever wonder when you're talking to any of these guests, are you talking to them? Or sometimes you can look in the eyes and think, I don't know, I think there could be somebody else or, or something else in there. And you know exactly what I'm talking about, don't yes. you? Because we, yeah. yeah. We spoke about it. And mm. no, 100% some of them, of the guests, and it's not, a high majority at all is mm. very few yeah. who I've interviewed. I must have interviewed well over 150 people now. Right. And, th yeah, they're, they're dull between the eyes. Yeah. Like, there's something, this darkness behind them, and it's almost like, yeah, they're dead eyes or crazy eyes, I sometimes mm. call them. It's almost so like they've know. moved out <clears throat> and something else has moved in, isn't it? Yeah. 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 But I do find they, they often have... People who have dark energy, and this is my firm belief, I do find that people who have a lot of things go wrong in their life, you know, consecutive bad luck after bad luck after bad luck, yeah. I think, is there a reason for it? Yeah. Because I seem to be quite a lucky person. I, I well, don't you've, know. you've turned your life around completely. Yeah. Uh, so I said to Jen, if you could just send me some bullet points on your life. And to be honest, I'd have to be here a few weeks to cover, and you haven't even sent me half. What what on earth were you being arrested for twelve times? Same thing? Did you just not get the memo, or were they for all different things? Growing up, I had such a bring up, like an amazing upbringing. Right. I, I'm really tight with my family. I go to girl guides, like brownies girl guides. Yeah. I was well behaved. I, I was good in school, and an event happened uh, where my friend's dad assaulted me when I was fifteen. Right. Uh, it, it turned into a police matter. It was obviously, it, and it was quite a, a tough point in my life. And it was definitely a turning point where I then turned into the biggest nightmare known to man. Do you think, had that not happened, would you have, a bit like sliding door moment, would you have gone down a different path? That's a really good question because I do, and I did for years, think back, had I had this not happened, yeah. would I have moved to Western Supermare, got addic had my addiction issues, yeah. so with drugs? Was that the catalyst? Do you it, think? It was it? It snowballed after yeah. that into ill behaviour. Mm. Um, I was always trying to, I was always getting grounded because I was so naughty, and I was always trying to like break through windows. My mum had to lock the bedroom windows because I would get my friends. <laughs> ironically on a horse, to ride up, get a ladder, put it up to my window and I'd shimmy down it. And then on the horse. And then ride off in the horse. It was straight out movie. 
<laughs> but would you have done that before 15? I was just, I was focused at school. I loved drama, yeah. expressive arts, um, maths, and you get it now. Um, but, you know, I was focused. Mm. And then it just, I started hanging around with the, the sort of naughty kids at that right. point. Yeah. But 12 arrests, could you give me an example? Um, to fund my habit of getting pissed with my mates in the park, right. I would steal, I found a lucrative way to steal my sister's DVDs and sell them on the market. As you do. And make money. So my first arrest right. was my sister brought the police on me. No. Um, cheers, Kat. No, uh, no, no charges were Was bought. this to teach you a lesson? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I did le not learn from that, obviously. Right. So, but by then they had my DNA on record because they, they take fingerprints and DNA. Yeah. Um, so I'd, you know, I'd always be hanging around the parks, drinking with my buddies, smoking weed, uh, cigarettes, you know, whatever we could get our hands on, really, mid-2020. Can you remember that drink? That yeah. was awful. Like, yeah. WK Blue. Yum. You could sort of, you don't know how you're still alive, really. I don't I really know. No. What was in it, really? Petrol. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Or that cider. <laughs> but no, so I'd, you know, find any excuse to go get pissed from it. I was out of control. My mum and my stepdad had separated. So it was, I was just my mum, who right. was, I found a pushover. So I could get away with blue murder. Right. I don't know why she still loves me today. Because that's what mums do. <laughs> that's what they do. Yeah, yeah. Um, was it getting um, more serious as time went on? The, more just... All the arrests have been really stupid decisions. It's never been anything that I, I would class as it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it, and it's always been surrounding alcohol or drugs. Yeah. I look... I, look back at all of them and it was actually because I've been through counselling and it was actually a counsellor who pointed out have you done any of those arrests sober and I went no. I, do you know what <laughs> funny enough I was just going to ask you that. No. Um, and it's everyone's like fighting in Western Supermare um, arrested for that no charges. So funny enough I've been charged with one two things. One was ABH on a man because he was walking down the street, punched my boyfriend in the side of the face. And I, although I paid the price for this, because I walked up behind him and punched him back, but it was under cameras, um, this is in Western Supermare. Yeah. And they, the police obviously came over, although the guy punched me very hard back, right. because I threw on camera the first punch. That, that was when I was 18, so I got arrested two days before my 18th birthday. So I can remember that, and that was awful. <sighs> Um, so it's, 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 all, but I was drunk. drunk and, uh, yeah. all, drunk. all drunk. So if you hadn't have been drinking, mm. do you think none of these arrests would have? No, not at all. Amazing, though, isn't so it? So it's, it's, when you look back, and I'm a firm believer that addiction is, you know, alcohol is the worst drug. I hundred percent. I absolutely right. agree. Yeah, and yet the most available, and you know we're selling. Oh, it's cool it. to have a drink. Yeah, we're selling it for Christmas. We want to celebrate, drown our sorrows. In fact, we just want it for everything, don't we? Yeah. So, um, you then went from there to uh, obviously heavier drug addiction. Heavier, yeah. And is that what led for you to be in a coma for three days? Yes, the the coma. Man, it was it was next level. So what's the this lead point, up to that? Oh, so I moved to Western Supermare, uh, which is the I swear is the UK's drug capital. I'm sorry to say, right. it's got a lot of rehabs. It's ready. You can get hold of anything. Right. So I was, I was young. I was hanging around with a group of guys and girls who, nice as they were, were all addicts. Right. And you know, as much as they probably wouldn't want to admit it. And we'd go out every night, get pissed, do ecstasy, cocaine, um, and then the drug ketamine came in. Do you know even the word? Yeah. Did you know at this point? Did you did you feel you were an addict? No. I thought I was just having fun. Really? So you I was eighteen year old having fun. Ooh. Yeah. I thought this is what everyone else does. They move out from home, mm -hmm. they go off the rails for a bit. And they might sort their life out later in life. Right. <laughs> because everyone, it was, yeah, everyone in the town was doing it. So it's all to, to what I was seeing, it was very normalised. And so ketamine started, and it wasn't till 
a few years later of my I was just you know living for the weekend living for the night went on for called far far too long right. like I do things like miss driving lessons because I'd be stinking of booze and stuff yeah like in the morning so my driving instructor once actually told me off and he was like you're not having your lesson today Jen you stink oh, really? and I was like yeah sorry um but no so I this gets to brings my friend Sabrina into it who unfortunately passed away and it's going to go hand in hand with this story so we'd we we were living in this party house me and her lived together um in the main in the center of western super Matt, and she distributed ketamine now it comes in liquid form and everyone we were hanging around with at the time was on it I'd, I've seen a guy run through, I remember he came into my house on it, chasing another guy with a chainsaw. And it was like Tom and Jerry moment, because you could get like from like uh, the kitchen to the garden, to the dining room, to the front room. And he was just running round and round with his chainsaw and you could just smell the two stroke and you were like, what's going on here? So what, yeah. what's going on when, uh, when you take it? You're off your head, you, you just <laughs> turn around and you think, for some reason you think this is normal. And you, because <laughs> you're all, because you're all on it, and I was, yeah, nineteen around that time, and yeah, do you, do you um, hallucinate? Oh yeah, oh yeah, it feels so, like you're you're in a computer game. Yeah. So I, so it's not real. Nothing's real, so and I remember be... thinking like your voice is going, uh, 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 beep, 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 you like that? Because it's a hawk drug. Oh, it's a hawk tra- horse drug, horse yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I used to do copious amounts. Now I was with, I was in a really volatile relationship with a guy who was a druggie as well. I won't name his name, bless him. Um, and he would cheat on me all the time. And you know, you young guys do. If you're living in that sort of community, people get fucked up. They're gonna yeah, yeah. do stuff they shouldn't. So they'd all be shagging each other and stuff like that. It was just so common knowledge. Uh, everything's out of control at this everything point. Everything is everything. out of control. I had no control yeah. in my life. So, and did you care? I did, because you do sober up. It's times. a little spark, isn't there, that's yeah. thinking... Oh, There's no, like, you put him in front of me and that relationship in yeah. front of me today, I'd be like, not a chance. But back then, you think it's their world and they're your world and that's all you're going to have. And yeah. you're going to be with each other forever, which never bloody happens. No. And, uh, no, so he'd done the dirt. I went home that evening. I was feeling depressed because I was addicted to alcohol and drugs, so mm-hmm. you're going to be depressed. Yeah. And I decided to drink six grams of ketamine. I didn't know it was six grams at the time. I just got my friend's stash out of the kitchen. She used to keep it under the sink. I just remember picking it up, drinking it, and the taste, it was like burning petrol going down your throat. Right. And, but I just wanted to end my life at that point. I'd had enough. And so I just kept gulping, gulping, gulping. Put it down, I was like, oh, that's right. And I kind of, I don't know how I did it. I went upstairs, I thought, just go lie down in your bed. Right. Um, so I went and lay, was lying down and I, I remember what I was wearing that day and everything because it was my favourite, I don't know if you remember Rip Curl skirt. Rip yeah. Curl, the, the surface brand. Oh, yes. I, I used to have a really nice, it was either Quicksilver or Rip Curl something skirt on. I was lying down in bed waiting for this shit to kick in. Were you really waiting for the end? I, uh, yeah. And that's what you wanted I, at that point? At that point, but then... I don't know whether the drugs kicked in or my conscience. Um, I got up and I went, if you don't get out of this house, you're going to fucking die and you need to go now. So I remember booting down the stairs, going, we had like a brick wall with a gate, running out the gate. Oh, and I can't remember anything from there, but um, police and everyone confirmed what had happened. So I'd got as far as about 100 metres round the corner to a Domino's pizza and apparently passed out. I was throwing at the mouth <coughs> and a couple came along who had been in town, came along and had seen me foaming at the mouth. I'd had my phone on me and they'd answered it to said ex. And so he was like, what's wrong with her? Where is she? And he didn't live too far. Maybe I was running to his. I didn't quite know where I was running, but I knew I had to get out of that house. Um, and so he came down and he said, 
the couple were like either side of you trying to hold you up there was foam coming out and he was like oh, and you don't remember any of this nothing nothing and so he rang the ambulance but they were so concerned <laughs> and there were no ambul ambulances around at the time that they got a police car shoved me in the back of a police car and took me to a &E, to where i got taken into intensive care straight away ripped clothes ripped up God knows what happened there, like drips everywhere. Because right. uh, next thing you know, I woke up three days later, my mother was there, and I still remember a checkered, it's an awful checkered like, shirt she had on. And that was, that, that's all that's stuck in my <laughs> mind is that is horrible. And um, with an apron, and there were doctors everywhere. And So you lost three days? Three days. Do you? Yeah. Because we, we have a friend who was in a coma, yeah. and he remembers voices when he was in the coma because they wanted to switch his life support off mm. and he said he was willing uh his wife also called jen don't let them do it don't let them do it did you hear everything the only thing i can remember is when when you're in a coma they put you on the massage beds like that right now i remember and i don't remember if this is the first time i came around or or what i thought they were going like that and i was getting and, I had this hallucination. I was on top of a shopping mall, like, you know, at the top of the escalators. And I was there on this hospital bed and it was doing that. And I, I just, it, it's still vivid in my mind. I remember trying to, when I fully came round, trying to rip the catheter out my my, my bits mm -hmm. because I, I don't know what was meant to go. I was like, I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. I want to get out of here. And I remember going to the toilet for the first time and there was a family in the family room on the on the right and they were all in tears and I said to, like, I remember I said, what's happened? And they were like, their daughter's just died. And I later found out it was a young girl who was 18 who took one ecstasy tablet and died. Yeah. And you think what you did? I was like, <clears throat> I pushed the limits. So it wasn't yeah. your time? It? That's what I've had to come to. It wasn't your time yeah. because that couple, that taxi. Yeah, it just all slid uh, into place that the evening. The fact that you didn't stay in that house no. because if you had, you probably be would have died. No, don't say I'll be dead.